What's my name? S A S. Oh yes, I'm here for Pooey Friday. One more time. Oh yes. Sit back, relax, unwind. What's my name? S A S. Oh yes, I'm here for Pooey Friday. One more time. Oh yes. Sit back, relax, unwind. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Sass here, I'm here for another Foolery Friday. Yeah. <laughs> oh Lord. This may go up a little bit later than I want it to go up because I'm not even going to go into detail, child. But it will be up a little bit later. I hope your week is going well. It is Friday. It is pre-Halloween, okay? What are you all doing for Halloween? Because I know y'all ain't going door-to-door, -door, child. Are y'all going to some churches? Are y'all doing some trunk or treating? What are you all doing, child? So, if you have little kids out there, you know, what is you all plans for um, tomorrow? So, anyway, nothing much to talk about. Nothing much happened this week. We all know what was, you know, the majority of the conversation was P-O-L-I-T-I-C-S. Tuesday, y'all. Tuesday. Okay, so if you haven't voted, all right, y'all go on out there and vote. Okay, because I am so sick of hearing about it. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of seeing the advertisements on TV. I'm tired of getting the little things on your phone. How do they find your phone number? Sending text messages, phone calls after text messages after phone calls. Child, it is getting on my nerves. I cannot wait until Tuesday's over. And then we will see who will be the President of the United States, okay? I'm pretty sure all of these political analysts, CNN, NBC, CNN, NBC, Fox, ABC, I mean, everybody's going to be up. That's all we're going to hear about. That's all we're going to see. I cannot wait until... Is it getting on y'all's nerves, too? Are y'all getting so many texts and so many phone calls, child? We shall see Tuesday night or early Wednesday morning who will be the next president of the United States. And I hope that um, 2021 and the rest of the four years will be so much better than 2020 because we know this has been a dumpster fire on top of fires, on top of fires. Just, just terrible. So, anyway... Let's get into some foolery on this Friday. First, I see right now I'm going to have to stop talking about Tamar. I'm going to put her in the coffin along with R. Kelly, Kanye, um, Meg, and Tori, and who else? I can't even remember right now. So, I'm, I'm tired of Tamar. Okay. As we know, Tamar have had her drama with her ex-boyfriend, David. He accused her of domestic violence. He took out restraining order on Miss Tamar. Of course, she denied, you know, these claims. We also know that Tamar tried to hurt herself, okay? We do know that. We also know that her family, her sisters, you know, came to her defense and, you know, talked about David and, it's just always something with them. Always. We know that Tamar had a TV show. I did not watch it. Okay. I, I'm sure it was nothing but Tamar fussing and running away from the camera, hiding in the bathroom, basement, closet, whatever. Anything to avoid what is going on with her. So she went on the Tamron um, Hall show. And, of course, Tamron Hall, you know, was talking about her personal life and her drama with her ex-boyfriend. And, of course, there's Tamar talking in circles. There's Tamar getting on the defensive with Tamron. 
Okay. Tamar says that, you know, that there is evidence of her not assaulting David. That he actually has video proof. And she was like, you know, release the footage. Release the footage. Okay. Now David comes back and says, Tamar, no, daggone well, I cannot release the footage because she destroyed the footage. He is still standing by that he was assaulted by Tamar. He still sticks by that. Tamar says that it's not true. In fact, Tamar said this. This is what she says. Somebody at this man that according to court documents he filed, he states that he has footage backed up. So is he lying to y'all or the police? Because he sure lied about domestic violence and the 30K in damages when at TMZ, he said it was 1600 then 7500 Make it make sense. That's what Tamar said. Then she has all these documents and... <sighs> then she says, I swear, I just wanted to tell my truth and maintain my integrity even while being talked about and lied on and constantly attacked for months while I've said nothing. Okay, Tamar, let's stop right there. Now, that's not entirely true because you have been talking. You have been talking via Twitter. You have been talking via Instagram. So, you have been talking. You haven't been completely silent. I've been dragged to court from someone who said they love me for a restraining order. And we have no contact. That's how she put it. Uppercase letters and exclamation point. Y'all, I know I'm loud. I know I'm loud, y'all. I get it. Okay. All right. Then she says, as a domestic violence, as, I'm sorry, as a victim of domestic violence, I take domestic violence accusations seriously. And David was not and is not a victim. Again, that's her. That's not me. I know I'm loud, y'all, but she, she's screaming. She's screaming through the toilet. I wish he had some type of integrity for me and keep whatever happened in our relationship private. Private. I mean, we all know what's going on in y'all's relationship more than you all know because you all are telling us. We would know any of this if you all would stay off of social media. I am trying to heal and move on and I wish he would stop this. I wish both of y'all would stop, Tamar. I am so tired of hearing about this you both need to be just away from each other again no contact just drop it if someone asks you a question that in regards to david please just say no comment and move on and i know braxton family values is coming on child i am not watching and i am not reviewing that family it has so much drama and toxicity that I just can't deal with it. I just, I don't understand how a family can go through so much. Isn't there something else y'all could be doing? Put out a clothing line. Put out a cookbook. Put out a, a, a towel set. Put out a bathrobe. Do something. But put out this show that is full of fussing and drama and tears. Just, just a mess, y'all. Just a mess. And I really wish that Tamar would just get off of social media and just focus, what, focus on your music. Is she, do she got any music coming out? What do y'all think about Tamar? Are y'all tired of it? Am I gonna have to put her in the in the um you know full refrody coffin? I think I'm gonna have to, y'all, because uh-uh, no more. I am done. Let's move on. All right, let's talk about your girl Wendy Williams. <laughs> Honey, Wendy Williams was uh not feeling any pain the other day on live TV. Now, we know Wendy Williams' history of drug abuse. I think her drug of choice was the cocaine. 
the white snow. So, she was on her show, and let's just say she looked real tired. I mean, it looked like she could go to sleep, literally. Her, her eyes was like halfway shut, slur speech. She was like slumped into her chair. She was just like... <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Honey, Wendy looked like she fell no pain. Now, to me, it looked like she took one too many Xanaxes. Okay. So, we have seen erratic behavior from Wendy before. This is nothing new. I thought that she was, you know, getting herself, you know, together. But whatever it is, hey, she come back and she said, I'm all good. Okay. She's human. All right. She makes mistakes. And when you know her audience is a tough crowd, child. So whatever was going on with Wendy Williams, I hope, I hope that everything works out, that she gets you know, the help that she needs because obviously she was feeling no pain the other day. Let's move on. Now let's talk about Jaguar Wright. Now, we have heard a lot about Jaguar Wright in the last year or so. And it's all been negative, um, drama. But I want to talk about how I was introduced to Jaguar Wright as a um, musician as a singer of course she did the backup track to Jay-Z um, song cry um, the song cry which was absolutely oh my god that is one of my favorite Jay-Z songs song cry and the unplugged version that was on MTV Jaguar Wright killed it phenomenal voice i love that song and that's when i first heard of jaguar right and then i found out that she was a solo dolo artist that she was actually an artist that does her own music and she put out an album i believe it was either 2001 or 2002 um denials Decisions, Delusions, I think that's, that's the name of the album. Something like that. And it was amazing. It was such a dope album. Her voice is just fantastic. So, I was excited for her. I, I bought the, um, you know, the album. I listened to it. I really really enjoyed it and she was up there with the neo soul you know musicians you know like the erica badus and the jill scotts and you know the andia alrees i mean she just had that sound and i thought this this chick is going to be someone major and we were coming off of, you know, Lauren Hill and the success of, you know, her album and all these great black, you know, neo soul, you know, women was on the uprise. And I thought she is going to blow everyone away. Well, after that album, me, myself, I didn't hear anything else out of her. I mean, I think like later on, maybe 10 years later, you may have heard something, maybe a song here or a song there, but nothing really that catapulted her to the level of success, in my opinion, like the Jill Scotts and the Erica Bandus, when I would think that she would have been, we will still be saying her name because again, that album was phenomenal. The voice on this woman, incredible. But you didn't even hear anything. She completely went off of my radar until, you know, what, a year or so ago when, you know, the drama, you know, happened with her and how she, you know, talked about the music industry and she called names. She talked about Common. You know, she accused him of assaulting her. 
And, you know, she talked about Alicia Keys and Clive Davis and, you know, Jill Scott. You know, she said that basically Jill Scott stole her vibe from her. She talked about, um, you know, Erica Badu. And so all this, you know, drama and negativity, you know, surrounded her. You know, and I was like, wow. You know, so this is how your name is, is coming back up. Well, I think a week ago or so, she did an interview with, um, you know, Tasha K. And Tasha K is another YouTuber here. And it was in my recommended. And so I was like, okay, so let's see how this interview goes. Because I really wanted to know about, you know, Jaguar Wright. Of course, I had already known about her awful childhood the abuse that she sustained and she just had a, a terrible, you know, painful childhood. But I was hoping in this interview that we would hear a little bit more about Jaguar Wright, her music. You know, how did she link up with, you know, um, Jay-Z and The Roots and, you know, how did she, you know, come about writing that album and her writing. I mean, I know that that's not drama, but some of us would like to hear something positive out of Jaguar, right? Instead of the negative. Y'all, I could not even get through this interview. Off bat, it was just, it was heart-wrenching and negative and depressing. And it went on and on and on about her childhood trauma and the accusations that she made about other artists. And it was just hard to listen to. And again, it was just a depressing, depressing, depressing interview. It went off of the rails. I think um, Tasha, Tasha K had asked about her mental health. And that triggered Jaguar Wright. And honey, it, I, it just lost me from there. Jaguar Wright went off. Tasha K was, you know, trying to reel it back in. But he just couldn't get there. Jaguar Wright's husband was in the background. I think he fell asleep at one point, child. Child, that interview. With all that being said, I really wish that she would... Put that energy that she had into something, you know, writing for other people or putting out new music. You just never know what may happen because she is definitely a talent. And for her to fall like she did with no music, maybe she, maybe y'all can tell me, did she have out new music? Did I miss that? Because, honey, I enjoyed um, that album, um, Delusions, is it Delusions, Decisions, Denial, something like that. Decisions, Delusions, Denial, I think that's how it goes. Y'all, it's a fantastic album. And her voice, whew. So, anyway, I just really wish the best for Jaguar Wright, because as, as I was a fan, I was a legitimate fan, I enjoyed her, and I just wish that she could just put that energy towards something positive and release, you know, new music or at least do an interview where it's posi positive about her life now. You know, how are you doing now? What are you working on? Are you doing anything? I mean, that's what I want to hear from Jack War, right? Because... As someone who enjoyed that album and her music, I just really wish her nothing but, you know, success and, you know, the best. Because I enjoyed the Jill Scotts. I enjoyed the Erica Badus. I enjoyed Lauren Hills. And, you know, I enjoyed that type of music. And for her to put out something that in my mind was a fantastic album to nail... It, it just it, it just it just breaks my heart a little bit because the potential this woman could have had to be like up 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 there you know it just is it, it's a little heartbreaking 
and um, she's a smart woman. I mean, she is a smart woman, so. Anyway, what do y'all think about Jaguar Ride? Y'all see, do y'all understand what I'm saying? I know I was like, you know, here, there, everywhere, but y'all get what I'm saying. But anyway, you know, if y'all listen to that album, let me know. What did y'all think about it? It was great to me, so. Let's move on. All right, let's talk about when, when, honey, Wendy Houston becomes the first black artist to earn third diamond album. <sighs> Listen, Whitney Houston is my favorite singer of all time. After her, Aretha Franklin. Okay. Whitney Houston was a force to be reckoned with, and her voice was just undeniable undeniable that this woman was just amazing okay so for her to have a third diamond album come on with me but of course we all know Whitney's history and the tragic thing that happened to her but congratulations to who is over Whitney's estate y'all is it her mama Oh, and that sister of hers or her auntie. Some of them ain't quite right, but hey, I ain't here to talk about them. But congratulations to Whitney and the third diamond. It's just a shame. Oh, my God. Tragic, tragic, tragic. Does it go? He don't go to Bobby, do it. Bobby! He don't go to him, do it. Let's move on. Netflix dropped the um, trailer for the new Selena movie. Y'all gonna watch Selena movie. Now listen, nobody can replace Jennifer Lopez as Selena, okay? We all don't watch. Have y'all watched the original Selena? It was everything. It was everything. I love the original Selena movie. But, of course, Netflix, they going to uh, redo it. They have redone it, and they dropped the trailer. Are y'all going to watch it? I ain't going to sit here and lie and say I'm not going to watch it. I am going to watch it. And I'm going to keep an open mind. Let me know if you're going to watch it. Speaking of reboots, child, Saved by the Bell. Now, how many Saved by the Bells have we done had? Okay? Now... It's the Saved by the Bell, the new Saved by the Bell. They got new youngins, and they got some older people coming back, like Zach. They got um, Kelly. They got, um, what was the black girl's name? Locke Voorhees. What was her name, y'all? She back. Um, Jesse, she's back. Slater, he's back. What was Lo Lisa? Lisa Turtle. So, everybody's back except for Screech. Now, we all know Screech had his own problems, honey. He was out there doing the P-O-R-N, child. Just a ding a ling a sling a child. Child, Screech had his own problems. And then he beat up somebody. When he on drugs or something, honey, he was a hot mess. So, anyway, um, I think that's going to be on the Peacock channel. Or you all going to be watching... Um, I may watch one episode or two, but, wait a minute, do you have to pay for Peacock? Because y'all know, if you have to pay, I ain't paying it, so. Are y'all gonna watch Saved by the Bell, child? What y'all think about that? Let's move on. Now, apparently, the Hip Hop Awards came on sometime this week. Was it Sunday or Monday night, child? I didn't even know. I had no idea. Do y'all want to know who won? Okay. Uh, best new artist, Pop Smoke. Best duo or group, Chris Brown, Young Thug. Artist of the Year, Meg Thee Stallion. Song of the Year, Roddy Rich. Video of the Year, Drake and Future. Did y'all watch it? Was it any good? Who performed? I had no idea that it was even on. Child, so underneath my radar. Underneath. My radar. Child, let's move on. Congratulations to Evelyn Lozano and Mark Anthony. Apparently, they're dating. Evelyn and Mark! 
Jennifer Lopez is ex-husband Ma. Ma um, Anthony, who's like four foot ten. Is dating Evelyn Lozano from Basketball Wives? Now, I just read, I don't know if it's true. Y'all let me know if that is true. Because I read, I see that on the blast. So, I just find that very odd that these two are dating. What? Child. If it is true, congratulations, I guess. I just find that odd. What an odd couple. But anyway, also congratulations to Blake Shelton and Gwen Stefani, honey. They are engaged, okay? They have been together for years. And now he done put a ring on it. She said yes, and they are engaged. Now, when they first got together, I thought they were odd. I thought they were an odd pair, but now that I see them together, and Blake Shelton, he is hilarious. He is so funny. So, you know, she says that she loves his sense of humor, and we all know they were on The Voice together. So, anyway, congratulations to them. Let's move on. All right, guys, that is it. I have nothing else to give, child. Nothing else to give. All right. I hope you have a safe and happy weekend and Halloween. Okay. And I will see you tomorrow for Love After Lockup. And if you would, hit that like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, friends, bye!